Alright, so how to beat Plaguebringer. It doesn't really matter what your comp is. Obviously, you can't just play a lot of mid and low tier survivors. You gotta play at least some good ones. Um, if you have like Annie and Hash, obviously, you're set to win, right? Um, but I wanted to talk more about just a lot of fundamental things survivors need to be doing throughout the game, but also especially during Dark Ones and the book phase that even really experienced survivors aren't doing too much. And the people in this game are obviously very good. They wouldn't have gotten there if they weren't good. They don't die throughout the game. I guess that's a bit of a spoiler. But just to say that they know what they're doing, and I think there's a lot you can learn from watching how these guys play. But I also wanted to address some things that they could have done better, you know. I could have also done a lot of things better. And this is the build I used. I'm finally Prestige 5, and I'm trying out some new things. So first I want to quickly address these two skills that I took out the points from. So you start with 350 energy as Plaguebringer, and at level 5 you have 400 energy. 10% of 400 is only 20 additional energy. So if you want to put this skill at level 3, you're only getting 40 additional energy, which is not even enough for an additional spin after you spun a few times. Spin initially is pretty cheap depending on whether or not you're in the pot, because if you're in pot it's a little cheaper. But once you do it a few times, it's going to start going up past 20 energy. So an additional 40 energy for 4 skill points is not worth it. And this I've already discussed, you're not going to hit experienced survivors with this, it's pretty easy to dodge. So I decided let's just cut both of these and let's try potion. So my idea with potion is, it infects with blight and if it could double the duration of that blight, that's actually pretty good. And if I can blight them right before the book phase, then they've got minus 20% damage for the book phase, which is very good. And we can actually just read it real quick. They take more health and shield damage as well while they're hit with potion. And of course they're infected with blight. But, as we'll see in this game, that's not exactly how potion works. We'll talk about that when we get to see potion. But this is going to be the build I use. I also put cut one from here to help uh, get this maxed, and I don't want to talk too much more about the build, we can just go into the game and I'll continue talking in the game because I actually wasn't streaming or speaking throughout the game, so I'll just talk throughout the game. Alright, and now we got the game. So here I began recording, I made sure that my sound was on. I actually increased the sound here in a second, don't worry. So. We're playing against a pretty good comp, right? We got an Annie, we got a Hash. We, you guys can see who we have. I don't need to list them all out. So as far as composition goes, they're pretty, they're on the good side. Here, I'm just gonna increase the volume apparently. Give me a sec, apparently. There we go. Found the first map pretty quick. About 20 something seconds. We would prefer that you mutilate them. So what, what do survivors need to do, right? Um, you're no, you'll notice I'm not going to flip cars this game, because I genuinely don't think that's a good idea, and I'm not trying to lead you survivors <laughs> in the wrong direction. So, what you should be doing as survivors is getting cars pretty early. But, I'm not going to talk too much about those hypotheticals, I kind of want to focus on what they're going to do, and just focus on what they could be doing better as far as Dark Ones and the book, but also throughout the game. So, right now I'm just getting to my level 3 traps, get that... Uh, fear up on them so you can possess them, which is much more levels than hitting them, which is just not reliable, unfortunately. And, yeah, so really just looking for survivors right now. Nothing too special going on. They're doing a good job of just running around without grabbing the car, which is fine, but arguably not the best idea. What you could be doing here as survivor is grabbing cars and just splitting up and then uh, just keep using cars and everybody has a car and you're fine. But they don't go for that strategy which is also fine. Okay. By the way, when you trap something, it actually applies the level of trap you have when you've trapped it. So if you trap something with no skill points in trap, 
and then you put level three on trap. Let's say you had all three skill points at one, for example, at once, for example. The trap you set is still going to be a level zero trap. The living have discovered another fragment of their precious map. Bleed them dry. Pretty good on them. Sometimes I will. Well, actually, I will say I usually go to dead end here on this map because you have a better chance of just finding them because you're in the middle of the map. And by that I mean if they do reveal themselves, you can get to them quick instead of going cross map. You're already in the middle. And generally people will come here just to, you know, loot up and having these trapped for that is pretty good, obviously. In this case, I don't know where they are and they're not here. So I didn't want to spend too much time trapping the whole thing up. Alright, so I know where they are. They're driving cars. It's been less than three minutes, which is a good play, and they're actually not that far. So right now, my game plan is n no, no different than if I was playing any slightly different hunt, uh, survivors. All right, just because they're playing like some top-tier survivors, I can't really change my game plan too much. My, I'm really doing still what I think is the best, which is get to level 3 traps so I can start... Um, taking advantage of when they hit traps and just grabbing them to get my levels up. Looks like Henry's about to be possessable soon, so I'll probably leave here pretty soon. I hear a crate. I'm not sure if I got that one there. And it looks like I'm heading there now. So even though they haven't... Oh, actually they have used cars. What am I talking about? They're, they're shooting as well, so that's fine because they already know that I'm on the way, or at least that I know that where they are. So, so far, they're not doing anything um, bad. I'll just leave it at, as a simple word. They're, they're playing together, it seems like. they, Even though they exposed themselves and told... Even though they revealed their location, it's not terrible because they're together. And let's see what they do here. I thought they were going to drive down that road, so I was prepared to possess it, but it looks like they came all the way out here for some crates, it would seem. So I decide to try harassing that. I completely lose where they were, and they get away for free. <laughs> so, good example of what not to do. But, note the little next to their icon in the bottom left there, that little spider with the, thick, the uh, little ticking as going down. That is Blight. So think of Blight as a little spider. That's going to come in handy later on when we're using two other effects on survivors, which is Potion, which makes them take more damage. Let's see how this goes, actually. Okay. I should have been attacking Annie here. I thought she would have gone in, so I attacked the car driver's side. One more hit, nothing else I can really do there. Gotta head out. There's Cheryl. This might be too much gun. If you can possess them, you kind of want to have a trap nearby so you can walk them into that. So I don't know if I meant to intentionally grab that elite either way though. Probably don't get too much done, so so far I got an ability. I got that hit a couple, it looks like. And they are actually wasting quite a bit of bullets, so this is great for me. Of course, one jumps fix all, fixes all those problems, which is fine. But, as I was saying, so they're currently blighted, those two, Annie and, er, um, Charles and Henry. And the other two effects that Playbringer has on survivors is, of course, Potion, which makes them take increased damage, and the Pot. When they're in Pot, they also have like a little, um, a little sign in the bottom left there, an indicator, I should say, that they're in the Pot and they can't, or er, they receive less healing. So later, I guess we don't need to wait till Dark Ones for me to say these things. So, during the Dark Ones, um, you'll notice when I use... Actually, let's watch this real quick, let's see what happens. Good dodge. He gets hit by that one, and then pretty much kills me pretty quick, so... 
I, I didn't, so far, in terms of damage, I've only used like one shump's worth of damage. He's just kind of camping his weapon, which is fine. I'm punching just to back up because Puddle was there, I couldn't run. And now, I haven't even addressed the fact that there's a hash in this game and he's 600 meters away. <laughs> so, I gotta just abandon everything I'm doing right now and go stop him from getting that objective. That's pretty far away. By the time I get there, it'll be probably well over a quarter finished. So, when it comes to Witch's Potion, it applies Blight and it applies that effect where they take increased damage. The skill only affects the increased damage portion of the effect of Potion. So, it doesn't actually increase the duration of the damage reduction that they get when they're Blighted from Combat Fatigue by 20%. That still only stays at 15 percent or uh, 15 seconds and doesn't stack. So they'll take increased damage for quite a bit. I think I I mean it makes sense that it would be 30 seconds, but you guys can slow down the video and check exactly how many seconds that is. But it's not the same as com it, they're not going to be combat fatigued for twice as long. That's still going to be only 15 seconds. So we get here. It looks like it's uh, maybe a third-ish or so. I'm expecting a possession or a ability. Yep. My best chance here is for elites. Let's see how he handles this. Survivors are right behind him, so I don't get too much done. And now, that's a good tree. I didn't mean to grab that. Now <laughs> they need to change ammo. Now the best thing I can do here is get as many possessions as possible to level up. I don't know why that elite was chasing me. And the best thing they can do is not take damage. Which doesn't mean kill everything. So let's see how they handle some of these possessions. So far nothing really too bad. Oh, I decided boss here, because I guess I'll have it for next time I need it. So, okay, notice how Henry is... He just got hit with both of those effects. So did Cheryl. Er... So, you see how that first effect on Henry is going down slower than the second one? The second one is Blight. The first one is the effect of potion. See how Cheryl and Henry's potion effect is still in effect? That's what that skill actually does. So they're not combat fatigued there, they just take more damage, which is obviously still something to consider. But when it comes to the book phase and necro phase, well, necro phase sometimes will get knocks. But during the book phase, you're most likely not going to kill anybody. So the whole potion strategy, I thought would be effective was the 15 seconds getting uh, increased because of the skill, but that's not true. So for anybody wondering, it doesn't work like that. This video isn't for that, obviously, but something I learned along the way. So I'm just trapping up everything uh, near where they're about to grab that objective. Much better to do this because it's time efficient than it would be if I ran across the map and then came back here and nothing was trapped up and they're already ready to start it. So, trap up things right near the objective as soon as you uh, get, uh, what is it, exercised? Usually you're within like a few hundred meters, if not like less. So, they're here, gonna just harass as usual, let's see how they play it. Again, the best thing they can do is really just avoid damage. They could kill things, obviously, and that's not as good as just avoiding damage as much as possible, but sometimes killing things makes you avoid damage. So let's see how he handles this. Gotta love finishers. Going for a rail. Smart. Can't do anything else about that. I gotta just go. I wasn't sure where to put those points. Here these guys are. Now I could probably harass those guys. But I noticed that Henry had 
enough fear to possess, and possessing survivors is pretty much always priority. Obviously there I messed up though. I just abandoned Henry because I know he's gonna, and as I just said, he, or I was about, just about to say, he's gonna just jump off that uh, vault over the top there, and he did. So, died pretty quick there, pretty good on them. Cheryl's kind of doing her own thing for a second, just a second, but she's she's right back in it. I get a free possession. Nothing else I can possess. I'll drop a portal right behind the trap. I'll grab something else with pot. Hit something into spin is the ideal, not maybe ideal, but one of the best, most reliable, I should say, ways to go about using basics. Focusing pot very heavily. Nothing is really wrong with that. That's, that's fine on the stage. I get off about, it seems like, three potions or so. I'm gonna get stun locked and then die, and then the res is not gonna get more than maybe one hit done, and I could be doing everything I'm doing here instead. Okay. Oh, I thought I had an opportunity to kill Annie there, but she kind of slipped out a little bit, so I lost that opportunity. I probably have a few more. I I've got a little bit of time. Only Henry is really taking the rest to be near me, which is very smart. They don't all need to take that damage. He's just being close so he can get a closer headshot, or body shot, whatever. Open with that. They don't usually see it coming. Probably one more possession. Let's see what I go for here. Hit into spins. Ooh, missed the spins because obviously I ran out of time. So, pretty good by them. Nobody's gone down yet. They're handling things pretty well. They're spreading out, which is very important. Most survivors don't spread out as much, and I'll get a lot of value from spin, and I'll let Linda finish. The dark ones must not fall. And um, you end up taking a lot more damage than you need to because I end up hitting many things, which means I get my energy regen even f increased because I hit more than one thing with my abilities. So it hurts in more than just damage when you get hit by spins and all those AoE skills. So preemptively setting up my proxies. Now, let's talk a lot more about Dark Ones, since we're here, and Book. So, ideally, Plaguebringer, and this kind of goes for every demon, you want to set up both your proxies on Dark Ones. And now, the way to counter that as Survivor is, before you finish the Dark Ones, you want to make sure you trigger all those proxies. And now, it's not like they can be everywhere, you just want to make sure you trigger the proxies near the Dark Ones. And it's very simple to do that, just make sure that you're doing a nice little 360 as you're doing the Dark Ones. One person can do that. As you hold down whatever button it is to hurt the Dark Ones, just go a little closer and just go do a 360. So you can preemptively proc all those proxy portals right before you finish Dark Ones. You do not want to go into Dark Ones. Actually, let's, let's see what happens here real quick. Good dash. I did not need to possess that, of course. I'm not about flipping things, though. Another possession though, great for my points. Unfortunately nobody else is around, so I figured I'm just gonna walk him back here and then I can do something with the car. But first apparently I decided to flip that, or trap that tree. And I think I just drive it over in a corner somewhere. Not even really in a corner. Yeah, he just goes back for it because he realizes, like, oh, you didn't flip it? So, whatever. I, I don't want to spend more time on that. It's also Henry. It's pretty uh, not well-spent time. Good shot from him. Usually want to grab the basics in case like this. Otherwise, elites aren't going to get too much done. And additionally, elites will get more done if you have a basic chasing somebody. Uh, although... The elite technically dies in one tap. Uh, I'm not sure if the hunter is focusing me or the elite, but elite should die in one to two taps. 
Okay, so I got a little bit of nice little value there, plus stalling, which is always great. That's the important part. See how she was able to avoid the windup? Okay, you don't want to get hit by that dash. That wasn't that great, unfortunately. She is taking more damage than she needs to. So there's definitely room for improvement there as far as walking back and taking basic hits. You can't avoid forever. However, it does very little damage. So you can eat basic attacks basically all day and you won't die. I mean, obviously you'll die at some point, but it does such little damage. They only get value from spin and the second ability. So if you want to keep holding back or you want to do some dash past them or whatever it is, you just want to make sure you're away from them when they spin or dodge when they use that second ability. So I grab Henry. I don't think I have any big plans with him just to grab him and throw him in there apparently. Very important on the demon side to have level 5 play uh, elite before dark ones. Again, I did not mean to grab this elite, but while I did, I'm still practicing the corrosive blast stuff. As you can see, he dodged that one. Hash is the biggest threat, so I'm focusing him. Nothing they've done so far, as far as uh, Dark Ones, is wrong, or I would disagree with, though. Uh, by the way, they have maybe one person that's getting chased, the other ones are attacking, and somebody is hitting the, hook, or, uh, the Dark Ones. They, they're eliminating little guys around. Okay, and now we're at the last bar. So, obviously you have to stay on top of who's getting possessed. It looks like he dropped his weapon, so I can't just freely wipe his team. No problem, I just bring him over here, and the idea is I could place a trap here, and then he'll run into that on his way back. Pretty simple. Now, here's where their first mistake is, right? You want to trigger all the proxies. So let's actually watch my... So the plan here, as I discussed, was to get them blighted before the book. But as I learned, getting somebody blighted from potion is not the same as them taking the additional damage from potion. So you'll see that there are two effects that Hunter Ash is under. The second one is the blight that makes him do, do less damage, the little spider. That other potion one just means he takes increased damage. So here we go. Book phase, they didn't address those proxy portals. That's already a problem. I drop my elite, I grab a basic by accident, which isn't good. They use their ability, which is fine. I grab an elite, which I shouldn't be able to do. And now the first thing you need to do is focus elite. Everybody should be focusing an elite. That goes for every single elite, whether or not Cauldron is out. As you can hear, and you'll see shortly, the Hunter Ash was unfortunately focusing the Cauldron this whole time. As you can see, the cauldron's half HP, and you can see him shooting in the top right there. I grab another elite, and at this point, I've gotten so much damage that it's almost unwinnable for them at this point, because they spent, they've let me get so much free damage. You can't really expect to win. So that's number one. Focus the elite, whether or not the cauldron is out. Now, they also shouldn't be attacking me from the side, because they get hit with splash. So try your best if you're meleeing to go directly behind the unit, in this case the elites, and melee from behind, and you won't get hit. It's pretty simple. As it's, it's that simple, I should say. Other than that, the only other thing they could be doing maybe a little better is body blocking, but as you can see, the solution to body blocking is dashing past them. So that does buy you a, like half a second or whatever, because you have to dash if they body block you, but you do have some counterplay. And then at this point, it's basically over. It's been over for a little bit because unfortunately they didn't prioritize the elite in the beginning. As you can see also, Henry is still unfortunately prioritizing the cauldron. So, few things to take away. Focus the elite ASAP. Make sure you trigger all proxy portals before finishing dark ones. I'll let Linda laugh. And when you're attacking elites, there's no point in getting hit by the splash. If you just stand directly behind it, you won't get hit by the splash and you won't do less damage. So 
Three pretty simple, pretty big things that any survivor can do, doesn't matter what class you are or what survivor you're picking. And I know this is like a long video just to make like these three big points about dark ones, but they're so simple and I think every survivor really just needs to do these things to have a better chance at book and you'll win a lot more of your games because it'll come down to who makes less mistakes. And if you go into book with an advantage where they don't have two additional proxy portals and where you're all on the same page about focusing the elites, you'll have a much easier time. So that's that about the book and the dark ones. As far as Plague Ringer's boss goes and the witch goes and potion goes, it's actually not as great as I thought. So I will be updating my build and tweaking it around and seeing what I think is really the best plague uh, Prestige 5 Plague build, and I'll probably update that with another video, but hopefully you guys got a little bit of insight and, you know, some knowledge about how to play Book Against Plague, and realize that it's not unwinnable, as long as you just uh, prioritize and do, and make sure that you're set up properly for Book Phase instead of rushing through the Dark Ones. Now again, obviously I have nothing against these guys, I don't think they're actually even a 4 squad, but they all obviously played well individually, and just those few things I think they and a lot of survivors I play against can tweak, and you guys will do much better. But obviously you can take a page out of their book as far as how to play throughout the game, and how avoiding damage and not grouping up to take a lot of splash is good, and you'll make it far using cars. They didn't use it as much as they could have, but they still use it pretty early, and used it well, and overall played pretty well. So, yeah, that's the video.